Hello everyone and welcome back to the One Stop Co-op Shop. Today we're going to start quest number five in the saga series, Journey in the Dark. <laughs> you guys, this is when things get real. Up to this point, it's been a little bit of a challenge, but it hasn't been terrible. But this is where we meet one of the biggest challenges of this game. Yes, the bell rock. <laughs> Let's see how we can do. Now, I did forget at the end of the last video to show you, I made a whopping one victory point for the ring go south. So yeah, that felt really good. <laughs> But you know what? We succeeded. We didn't bring the lure of the ring, so I'm okay with that. <laughs> and I just called it the lure of the ring, and I think it's lust for the ring. That's what it was. But we don't have the lust for the ring burden. Thank goodness. Journey in the Dark. After their attempt to climb the Redhorn Pass over the Misty Mountains was thwarted by heavy snow, and their journey through Holland hounded by evil Vargs, the Fellowship of the Ring was forced to seek passage under the mountains to the mines of Moria. Once the greatest dwelling place of the dwarves, Khazad Doom was often plundered by orcs and had become a name of ill omen. Yet there was still some hope that Frodo and his companions might find the colony of dwarves that had been led there years before by Balin, son of Fundin, one of Thorin Oakenshield's renowned companions in the quest for the Lonely Mountain and a friend of Bilbo Baggins. However, the Company of the Ring discovered no sign of Balin's colony upon entering Moria. Instead, they were surrounded by constant darkness and a growing dread, with the way behind them blocked by the Watcher in the Water. The Fellowship's only choice was to make the hazardous journey across the mines to the eastern door many twisting miles away. They hoped to make the crossing in secret, but the presence of the One Ring would not go undetent undetected by the evil thing lurking in the deep dark. Well, well, said the wizard. The passage is blocked behind us now, and there's only one way out on the other side of the mountains. Trapped inside the mines of Moria, the Company of the Ring must find their way through many twisting passages to reach the eastern door. But with every step they take into the mines, there's a growing sense of dread. There were not only many roads to choose from, there were also in many places holes and pitfalls and dark wells beside the path in which their passing feet echo. We have a few setup rules. First, shuffle the Burden Treachery cards pursued by the enemy and Shadow of Fear into the encounter deck. I'm not going to show you those ones. Hopefully you won't even see them. <laughs> yeah, that's going to just be a hope. Uh, add the Burden Objective cards Grievous Wound and Overcome by Grief to the staging area. So those ones I need to show you. These are new type of burdens in that instead of being shuffled into the encounter deck, they actually are face up in the staging area as you can see by their setup rules. They are both attachment cards, so overcome by grief states that after a character is destroyed, if overcome by grief is unattached, attached to a hero, counts with the uh, attachment text, after a character you control is destroyed, exhaust the attached hero, until the end of the round, attached hero cannot ready. Okay, so it just makes a hero feel very sad that one of their characters have died, they won't be able to ready until the whole next round's done. That's not good. <laughs> and it stays out in the staging area until that happens. We also have Grievous Wound. This says, after a hero takes damage, if Grievance, Grievous Wound is unattached, attach it to a hero. It has a condition, after the attached hero exhausts, deal one damage to it. Also not a good one. <laughs> we have set up instructions here to set the Balrog, the Great Bridge, the Chamber of Marzul aside out of play. Add Doom 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 to the staging area and place 10 damage tokens on it. Each player adds one different location to the staging area. Here we have Doom Doom Doom. At the end of the quest phase, remove one damage token from Doom Doom Doom. Then, if there are no damage tokens on here, add the Balrog to the staging area. So yes, in approximately 10 rounds, the Balrog will come out. But I will tell you now, there's many things that's going to reduce the amount of tokens on here. So he's probably going to come out sooner than 10 rounds. Also, forced, at the end of the quest phase, the Balrog makes an attack if it's in play. So we need to remember that as well. Our two locations that we'll start with are the Mines of Moria and the Many Pillared Hall. Two reasons that I'm doing that. First of all, look, they both have shadow effects. Want to get them out. But second of all, it actually has to do with their abilities. So this says, while Mines of Moria is in the staging area, progress must be placed on the Mines of Moria before it can be placed here. So think of it almost like the wall of trees and the print-on-demand. We're going to have to place four progress here before we can start placing progress on the active location, then onto the quest. 
also the many-pillared many hall, it gets plus one for each many-pillared hall in play. So there's only one in play right now. Part of the reason I want to start with one out right now, not having, uh, not having potentially four out at one time. But we'll start with having two threat from the many-pillared hall, plus two from the Mines of Moria. So that's four threat out in the staging area. And already we're going to see a way that we're going to have doom, doom, doom happen sooner. After a player optionally engages an enemy, remove one damage token from doom, doom, doom. <laughs> so yeah, we're going to try not to engage those enemies. This first part, we're just trying to run away. Later on, we're going to have to fight them, and then you know who's coming out. <laughs> Don't want to forget, we also need a total of 14 progress to get through this part of the quest. Our deck that will be first player for this game will be our Hobbit deck. We have Frodo, Mary, Sam, and Pippin. Our threat starts at 20, and don't forget that Sam has plus 2 health thanks to his boon card that is a permanent setup. Now, this is something that we actually had to look up, and I'm still not sure that's right, but I have Sting now because I chose it to be into the campaign pool, but I think I have to start with it in my deck, so I'm not going to have it out in hand like I did in the last quest. Hopefully, I can find Sting as soon as possible and throw that on Sam so he can become a little bit stronger. I also want to mention at this point that I did switch out five cards in the Hobbit deck. I put in three of Fortune and Fates, and you'll see why, and I put two Ethelises in so I have a little bit more condition removal because we have those two condition burdens already out in the staging area, <laughs> and there's very likely to be more that might show up, right? So it's just going to help me with condition removal. Uh, okay, so we're going to draw five because we still have Gandalf's Delay in effect. So we will have Resourceful. Oh, that's super nice. We have Andril, that's also nice. We have a Test of Will, a Song of Travel, and a Warden of Healing. Great. One, two, three, four. I, I have to keep that hand. I mean, I'd love it if I had Treebeard, but it, having Resourceful right at the beginning is going to be super awesome. Our Rohan deck has Gildor and Glorian, Grimbjorn, and Elfhelm. We'll start with 30 Threat. And don't forget, Grimbjorn has plus one shield because of the starting boon that he chose as well. We'll go ahead and draw our five cards. We have a Dunedain Warning. We have Bulwark of the West. Oh, that's actually not bad. An Errant Rider. We have Gandalf. And we have a Rittermark Knight. Nah, I mean, it's good, but it's not good enough. Let's try that again. Let's do a take two. <laughs> One, wow, Steward of Gondor. Awesome. Uh, Valiant Sacrifice. I don't mind that. Three, four... And five. Well, it's still not great, but Steward of Gondor, that's key. We have now generated all of our resources, and let's go ahead and have each player draw a card. We have Dunedain Warning and Heed the Dream. Our Hobbit deck's going to start us off by playing Resourceful. Because it is Secrecy 3 and we are right at 20 threat, this only costs one to play. We're using Fertile's resource to play this, and we're going to put it on Mary. I need lots of the blue or spirit resources this game. <laughs> Then we're going to use the remaining three that we have actually to play Andril, but we're going to play that on Gildor because Gildor is considered a noble hero and he'll get plus one willpower. That's really what I want. The plus one attack and plus one defense is great, but he's probably not going to be defending or attacking. Well, I, I shouldn't say that. I don't know. But for sure, the plus one willpower is nice. For the Rohan deck, we're going to go ahead and play Steward of Gundor first. We'll use our two leadership resources, put that on Grimbjorn. We'll immediately exhaust it, so we generate a total of three of the uh, tactics resources, and then we'll use two out of the three to put this Westfold Outrider out. Moving to questing, I think we're going to quest out over here on the Hobbit side. So that's two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine total questing. We'll go ahead and add Gildor for a four, so that will give us 13 total questing. 13 to four in the staging area. Are you guys ready for this? <laughs> Let's see how we do. Our first character is an orc. When revealed, either remove one damage from Doom, 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 or reveal an additional encounter card. See what I mean? <laughs> I think this early in the game, let's remove a token. Already the Balrog is going to come out sooner. Okay, let's flip our second one. Are you serious? The exact same character. We have to do the same thing. I don't want another encounter card. Oh, what the hey. Let's remove another one. This means already two damage tokens are removed from Doom, Doom, Doom. Can you guys feel it? <laughs> I can feel the Balrog already coming. There's a total of eight threat in the staging area, and we quested for 13. 
That means we placed a total of five progress. Well, guess what? That five progress, four of them will go on to the Mines of Moria and complete it. And our fifth progress will simply be placed right here. <laughs> Ow. That does mean, though, we can go ahead and travel to the Many Pillared Hall. And that means we don't have to worry about this threat right now because now that is the active location. I almost forgot, you guys. At the end of the quest phase, we need to remove the damage token from here. So we now only have seven more rounds. Yeah, it's not going to last long before that Balrog comes out. <laughs> Now here's the thing, this is what's all that's left in the staging area besides those burdens. And I would love to take one out. They don't look that hard. I only need four attack to take them out. But here's the thing, my threat's 30, the Hobbit Dex threat is 20. <laughs> and if I engage any of these optionally, I remove another token on Doom, Doom, Doom. So I think I gotta keep running. I'm gonna leave them there and let's go ahead and just end the round. We'll increase the threat of the Hobbit deck to 21 and of the Rohan deck to 31. We have generated resources, and let's go ahead and draw cards. And we have Unexpected Courage and Galamdring. Oh, that's amazing. Our Rohan deck is first player this round, so we'll go ahead and start with them. First thing we'll do is we'll spend one of Frodo's resources and one of Grimbjorn's resources to play Galamdring. That's going to give Grimbjorn plus two attack, and the best thing is, after that character destroys an orc, yeah, that's all we're going to see is orcs, draw one card. <laughs> that's why I'm okay with essentially, we're going to essentially empty his hand. We're also going to play the Errant Rider so that we're able to move resources around going forward. We're going to play the Dunedain Warning. That's going to give Grimbjorn plus one shield. So he will now have five shield and he'll have five attack with five health. And we'll do a secret vigil, and we're going to throw that on this Moria Orc. So now the Moria Orc only has one threat instead of two. And when we defeat him, we'll reduce our threat by two. I wish it was a mount, but I don't have one yet. So we're going to just play Unexpected Courage with our Hobbit deck and throw that onto Grimbjorn so that he can at least ready more than one time around. For questing this round, we're going to send Gildor for four, Alfhelm for six, and Frodo for Eight. We'll then send Sam for 9, 10, 11, and Pippin for 12, 13. I'm going to keep Mary. Oh, man, or should I just do it? I'm going to just do it. That's a total of 15. Currently, it is 15 to only 3 in the staging area. We're only drawing two cards. Shouldn't be bad, right? <laughs> so we'll flip our first one. We have a Many Pillared Hall. Okay. While uh, Many Pillared Hall gets plus one threat for each one in play, the active location is a Many Pillared Hall, so I believe that's still in play. So it will be a total of three threat here instead of just one or two. So that's our first one. And then our second one, oh, great, our first burden, doomed one. So that means that's going to hit both of our uh, threats. So the Rohan deck is at 32, and the Hobbit deck moves up to 22. Then it says Surge, so we're going to be revealing another one. When revealed, treat the printed text box of each character in play as blank until the end of the round. Oh, that takes away Grimbjorn's Sentinel. Wow. And you know what? Uh, I have a Test of Will in my hand, but I used Mary's resources for Unexpected Courage. So there goes that. We're not going to be able to... <laughs> dang. We're not going to be able to cancel that. So... Everybody's text boxes are blank for the rest of the round. And that surges into the Orc Chieftain. <laughs> okay, he's a four threat, four attack. Cannot have attachments. Allies cannot defend against an Orc Chieftain. <laughs> of course. Forced. At the beginning of the encounter phase, Orc Chieftain engages the first player. Our total threat in the staging area is one, because we have our secret vigil on this one. Two, three, plus four is seven, eight, nine, ten. We quested for a total of 15, so we get to place 5 progress. Well, that kind of stinks. I was hoping we could push through the many-pillared hall. We can't. We needed 6 progress just for that. <laughs> that orc chieftain. Ugh. At the end of the quest phase, you know what's happening. Doom. 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 We'll move into the encounter phase. Neither of the Moria orcs will engage us. Their engagement cost is too high. But this orc chieftain, because of its forced ability, will engage us. And from what I understand, that's not an optional engagement, so we don't have to worry about removing a token from Doom, Doom, Doom. This orc chieftain is now engaged with the Rohan deck. 
Moving to combat, we'll place our shadow card on the orc chieftain. I can still defend with Grimbjorn, thank goodness, but I will not be able to do my response because his text box is blank. So we get uh, shadow, darn it. Attaching enemy gets plus one attack. If this attack destroys a character, attacking enemy makes an additional attack. Well, he attacks for five, three shield, plus two more is five. Oh, Grimbjorn does not take damage. Sweet. Then, you know what? We get to attack, and I do have my Westfold Outrider ready as well. So we can exhaust our unexpected courage. Ready, Grimbjorn. His attack is 245, plus the Westfold Outrider is 7. We need a total of 8 to take him out. So we don't get to take him out, but we do put, so seven, we put 4 points of damage on him. The biggest problem is next round, he's going to engage the Hobbit deck. So I just have to hope that we don't have any cancellation of our text boxes so Grimbjorn can Sentinel. We'll go ahead and end the round. We'll increase threat. So now we're at 33 for the Rohan deck and 23 for the Hobbit deck. We have now refreshed. Let's go ahead and have each player draw a card. We have Treebeard and A-Rod. Clutch pulls. For this round, our Hobbit deck's just going to play Song of Travel, place that on Sam, so he's also going to be considered a blue resource. And then using Frodo's, Mary's resources, and one of Pippin's, we're going to play Treebeard. Don't forget he comes in play, into play exhausted, but having a tree in the mines of Moria, <laughs> you can't go wrong with that, right? <laughs> and then on the Rohan deck side, we're going to play A-Rod on to Grimbjorn. That will give him plus one attack because he now has a mount and... If he defeats a character, he'll place one progress on any location. We've got to keep pushing with questing, I think. So we're going to go ahead and send Frodo for two, Mary for four, Sam for seven, and uh, Pippin for nine. We'll add Gildor for 13 and Elfhelm for 15. We'll start by drawing our first encounter card, and we have... When revealed, each player assigns X damage among characters he controls. X is the number of exhausted characters. Oh. <laughs> this is why you have Test of Wills. And I made Sam... Oh, I made Sam blue. I was just thinking I didn't have a resource. I have Sam as blue, so I can use his one resource to cancel that. Yeah, that's not happening, because that would mean uh, a character might die, Grievous Wound would come out, Overcome by Grieve could come out. <laughs> no, we're not dealing with that. Our second one is Doomed One and Surge. Well, great. Uh, can't stop that one. Our Rohan's deck's threat is going to go up to 34, and the Hobbit deck is going to move up to 24. i got to start worrying about them. When revealed, each enemy engaged with a player and not in the staging area makes an immediate attack. Oh, that just means your chieftain will attack. That, that's actually okay. We'll go ahead and draw a shadow card. This Orc chieftain will attack. Grimbjorn will defend. And he has a defense of five. This guy's attacking for four. We do have a shadow effect. Defending character player discards a non-objective attachment he controls. Two non if their threat is 35 or higher. Oh. So we have to discard a non-objective attachment. I think that means we're going to lose Dunedain Warning, which stinks. We're going to lose one shield, but we still have enough shield not to take any damage. Four, three, and one is four. Then we'll go ahead and spend one of Grimbjorn's resources to do his response. Ooh, that's a three. Sorry about that. We'll move this down to two. We attack. He is affected by his response, so he will reduce his armor by two, so his armor is only one. Yeah, we totally took the Orc Chieftain out. Thank you. Our Rohan deck totally just defeated an Orc. Guess what? We have Glamdring. We get to draw a card. Dunedain Mark. Yeah. Not to mention, we have A-Rod out as well. That means we get to place one progress on any location. We're going to place it on our active Many Pillared Hall location. That will complete it, which also means the one that's in the staging area right now that's adding three threat will only add two threat because there's now only one of those in the stage or one in play instead of two in play. That was awesome. Now, I wish I could say we were done, but we're not. We still have one more card because that card had Surge on it. So let's flip this, and we have the Mines of Moria. Ah, oh, we know what this does. We have to place progress on here first. Our staging area, though, doesn't look too shabby. We've got two, three, four, five, six, seven. We quested for a total of 15, so that means we get to place eight progress. Four will go onto this Mines of Moria to get rid of it. 
And then we'll place four more on the Long Dark of Moria. Now we still need nine more. <laughs> oh man. So after the quest phase, we'll take this three, move it down to a two. Yeah, that Balrog's coming out soon. And then we'll go ahead and travel to the only location that we have out there, the Many Pillared Hall again. We're definitely not going to optionally engage any enemies here. I am not in the mood to uh, hurry up that doom, doom, doom. So we'll go ahead and just increase threat. We'll move to 35 for the Rohan deck and 25 for the Hobbit deck. We have now generated resources. Let's go ahead and draw cards. And we have Fast Hitch and Faramir. Starting with our Rohan deck, we're going to go ahead and exhaust our Errant Rider. We're going to move one of Grimbjorn's resources over to Gildor. So we have five leadership resources. We're going to use four of them for Faramir because he will be awesome to giving us some more questing, which is what we need. And then another Dunedain mark. Actually, that's our first Dunedain mark, but another point of damage for Grimbjorn by putting the Dunedain mark on him. For the Hobbit deck, we're just going to play Fast Hitch. We're going to throw that onto Mary, so hopefully we can use his ability to reduce our threat a little bit. With that many pillared hall as our active location, we need as much questing as we can get. So I think I'm going to do four, five, six, seven, eight on this side with the intention of using Faramir later. I'm also going to be a little risky over here too and send Treebeard. 10, 11, 12, but then we'll exhaust fast hitch so he's ready. 12, uh, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 to a total of three in the staging area. Let's see what this encounter deck's going to throw at us this time. So our first card we have is the Uruk from Mordor. When revealed, Uruk from Mordor makes an immediate attack against the first player. Hmm. Okay, the first player is the Rohan deck. Not a problem. So we'll place this right here. He's attacking for four. Grimbjorn is defending for four. Let's see what we get. We get no shadow effect. Great. Grimbjorn will then use his response. He attacks for seven. Reduces two shields, so he's really attacking for nine. This Uruk didn't know what hit him. <laughs> okay, this next one is for the Hobbit deck. We have Peril Archery 2. Oh, archery is something new you guys haven't heard about. Oh, so what I like to use are these tokens to remind myself about archery. Archery is, while a card with archery is in play, players must deal damage to character cards in play equal to the specified archery value at the beginning of each combat phase. This damage can be dealt to characters under any player's control, and it can be divided among the players as they see fit. What's important is armor does not block archery, which is ridiculous. It should be able to, but... Okay, so this is Peril Archery 2. X is the number of players in the game, so this is a 2 threat. When revealed, assign X damage among characters you control. Oh, uh, Treebeard's going to get hit with that. If I can help it, I don't want any heroes taking damage. So that means Treebeard is going to be the one taking 2 points, but I also don't want him to die. But he has 3 remaining health, so I think that's okay. Well, we're being followed by a bunch of orcs. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. Five total threat, but we quested for 17. That means we place 12 progress. Six will be used to complete the many pillared hall, and then the remaining six will go here on the long dark of Moria. But we only have 11. We still need three more progress to get to the next quest card. We're going to have to remove another counter from Doom, Doom, Doom. Here we have our staging area. Now, I could optionally engage this Moria Archer so I could potentially kill him because he's not really that hard to kill. He only needs six. Grimbjorn could do that, no problem. But I'd lose another counter on Doom, Doom, Doom. I think, oh man, I think I'm going to wait. It sounds terrible. I mean, he's at 42. No one's even close to 42. So that's why I'm going to wait. And don't forget, we have plus three to all of their engagement costs because we have Pippin. So he's really a 45. So I think we're going to leave him. But that means during the combat phase, which normally we would just pass through, we are going to have to assign two points of damage. For our two points of damage, I think we'll place one on Faramir on, and one on Westfold Outrider. And you guys, I totally forgot about Faramir. If I had used him, I think we could have pushed ourselves to the next quest card. But it's too late now. Not going to do anything about it. We'll, we'll get there next time. Hopefully. We'll go ahead and end the round. We'll move our threat up. 36 for the Rohan deck and 26 for the Hobbit deck. Let's refresh. 
and we'll go ahead and draw a card. Now I need to not forget that I used Galamdring and defeated an orc. So our uh, Rohan deck will actually get to draw two cards. And we have Armored Destrier and a Bjorning Skin Changer. And then for our Hobbit deck, they will draw a Song of Travel. <laughs> 